Good morning and welcome to Grain TV. For Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. Cody, what's your favorite number out of this morning's garage with data? Yeah, I, I'd say that's Good afternoon and welcome to the Friday edition of Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. Brock, crazy end of the week Thursday. Big sell-off Friday, big recovery. What's going on in the grains? Yeah, basically I think it was what we were witnessing today was some Profit taking after a pretty good run up last week. Hit all time highs on Monday of 779 on December corn. Uh, so I'm looking at profit taking today, looking at some position evening before the three day weekend, and overall just strength in the market right now. We hit 750 as a resistance level. We're higher than that right now. We closed at 760 today on December corn. Yeah, and I think today's, uh, you know, some analysts came out with some more numbers to uh, give the market something to think about. What did you see in the numbers here? Yeah, we basically saw the lowest number come in yet at 143 by the Landworth Group. Um, you know, that's pretty shocking to the market at this point. Even though we are, are in quite a big range from 143 all the way up to 153 that the USDA is still holding on to, uh, I look for that to actually be revised lower in the September 12th report. Um, but as far as Corn is concerned. It looks like we have a varying range, but we're going to be in, in that 140 range, I think, somewhere. Yeah. Brock, put you out on the limb here. What do you think the market is trading right now for corn yield? I think we're trading about that 147, 148, just slightly below what uh, you know the industry is thinking at 150. So I think we're trading right in that seven. Uh, excuse me, 145, 147 range. Um, I look for that to possibly be the driving force for the next couple of weeks or so. We'll be stuck in the range from $7.50 to $8 right. think, in the near term. Hey, uh, outside markets this week, what did you see in the outside? Yeah, we saw you know gold return to strength, and we saw that very bullish again this week, very volatile still. Uh, we saw oil uh, tack on about a dollar. We saw the Dow. They were positive for the year going into today's session, but then mm -hmm. we saw a massive sell-off today after a weak jobs report came out. Uh, so I'm looking at that as being pretty pretty bearish at this point, uh, right. as the macro economics. Uh, and we saw, you know, strength in the dollar. You know, basically a, a strong move in the dollar, which of course is negative for a grain sector, and especially hard hit was the wheat market, where we know. Uh, dollar strength leads to weakness in the wheat market. But I think there's some positive news to gravitate here for in terms of wheat. What do you think about uh, you know some of the key drivers of the wheat market? Well, I think domestically, uh, we're looking at a hard red spring wheat that's uh, had some pretty low yields considering what we were figuring on earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had problems getting it out of the field. Harvest is well behind, about 20% 20, 20 behind as of Monday. Um, and down south, the hard red winter wheat, we're looking at that as being pretty dry right now. We might get some alleviation if this uh, tropical storm in the Gulf actually heads west and moves into the Texas, right. uh, Oklahoma Panhandle area, might get some rain there. Uh, internationally, you know, I think internationally, I think some of the big news out this week was Russia, of course, having transportation issues with their wheat crop. They're stopping their export business right now, what they called for a five to six day cut. But if that trans you know, transpires into a longer prolonged period, then obviously that's good news for the U.S. market. Australia continues to struggle with areas of dry conditions. Ukraine announced that their quality of their wheat is pretty bad, and so a lot of it's going to end up being feed wheat instead of milling quality. So I think there's some news out there that is a lot more bullish for the wheat market than what we're factoring in right now. Wouldn't you say, Brock? Oh, I would definitely agree with you there. Even though we're down this week uh, about 19 cents on Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, just over 10 cents on uh, Kansas City, um, you know, I'm still looking at that being the upside is pretty good. Out right. Of the and then, you know, speaking of upside, beans had a good week coming strong out of that breakout of $14. What do we see in beans this week, Brock? Yeah, like you were saying, we broke out of that resistance level that we were looking at at about 1410. We went up and hit a high of 1465, sold off for a couple of days. But today, again, we saw renewed buying interest uh, coming into soybeans. Uh, and I'm just looking at that as. Uh, some of those yields that we were looking at, again, from the private groups right. were looking pretty abysmal at this point. We had 100 degree temperatures in Illinois again. Nothing is really going to be helping the crop with those sorts of temperatures. Exactly. Hey, we're going to take a break. and When we come back, we'll delve more into some of these fundamental drivers affecting the grain markets. For fans of charting price movements, did you know you can create many different kinds of charts on Firetip? Simply click on the charting icon at the top toolbar here. Select the contract you want from the drop down menu. In this case, grains is already selected for me, and I'll be selecting December corn. From there, you'll have to now select the chart type. I'll keep this simple and I'll be avoiding spread charts for now. Bar period denotes the time frame of each bar on the chart, whereas bars to load denotes how many bars you wish to have on the chart. In other words, how far back in time the chart goes. 
Bar width changes the size of each bars, and bar style denotes what sort of chart you'll be looking at. I typically view candlestick charts, though the others do have their advantages. Consistent scaling refers to how the bars are represented on screen. With it selected, the bars will always be the same size relative to each other. With it turned off, depending on what area of the chart you're looking at, candles will appear larger or smaller, but will remain in scale with each other on screen. Select OK and you've just created a chart. From here, you can scale back in time to see other price movements, or you can zoom in and zoom out on the chart. There are many options available at the top of the chart as well, but I'll leave those for another session. To try it yourself, visit us at grainhedge.com for a free demo account. Welcome back to the weekly wrap-up. Now, Kevin, we've seen strong basis for the last half of the marketing year, uh, but it seems like this trend has been eroding for the last couple of weeks. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of basis across? Well, that's exactly right. The market is, is basically trying to converge into a new crop basis, so basis levels that were exceptionally strong a month ago are now on par with harvest level basis, and so we're seeing a big collapse across the board in corn and beans. I continue to think that the corn market is going to hold up pretty strong on basis in harvest, but for beans, I look for basis to be more on par or even slightly weaker because it just doesn't have the demand push that the corn market does. So look for your harvest basis to be pretty good for corn, but maybe not so good for beans in, in the fall season as we approach harvest. Brock, you know, on the supply and demand front, you know, I think everyone's going to be talking about the September crop report coming out next week. What do you think uh, the biggest numbers are here? Yeah, I think uh, we're going to see quite a few revisions lower on some of the uses that uh, the USDA was projecting mm -hmm. for last year. Uh, we didn't see the exports quite get met. So we were about 100 million bushels below where we were projected to be. Uh, use for ethanol was also lowered by about 200 million bushels. So I'm looking at 300 million bushels there that could be added to the last year. Right. Pretty, pretty uh, bearish number. And these numbers we have up here are basically reflecting old crop stocks based on USDA. So if old crop stocks from USDA grow another 200 to 300 million bushels, then that will go into new crop stocks, which actually might alleviate some of the real pressure that we have right now. You know, if Landworth is right, these analysts are right that are coming in at low 140 yields. Yields, you know, our ending stocks for new crops just become un untenable. You know, the market is just going to explode. So maybe this keeps the market a little bit on a on a flatline course until we get a, a better handle on on production. Right, and you know, as far as soybeans go, our exports for this new crop sales have been just abysmal across right. the board. Uh, I think we're down about twenty four percent of where we were supposed to be, and we continue to see sales being lost to South America. And typically this time of year, people are starting to want or demand our new crop beans that are going to be coming off the field here in about a week, or right. excuse me, about a month or so. So I'm looking at that as pretty bearish right now for the bean market. Yeah. And on the bull side, you know, obviously the production outlook is still uncertain, a lot of variability left in the bean market in that regard. So, you know, it's maybe a wash right here, Brock, would you say? What are you looking for in the next week here? Um, you know, on the corn side of things, I'm looking for some choppy trade, uh, probably range bound between 750, 779, which was mm -hmm. the new resistance, I believe, at 779, the all-time high. Uh, for beans, I'm looking for that. The path of least resistance is to the upside, and I'm looking for, you know, some of those yield numbers to actually take effect uh, like they did today, I believe. Um, and then we have more numbers coming out on Monday from Informa. So the probably spark the market higher if they end up with a pretty low number on the right. yield side. So a lot of uncertainty. Hey, keep following us live on Grain TV. Visit us anytime on the Facebook or Twitter or call us 877-GRAIN07. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Tuesday.